Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, and it is time for a young and restless episode recap. I'm your host, Mademoiselle Keisha Chantal, and today we are in Paris. Well, I actually wish we were in Paris. I'm completely obsessed with that city, but we're not in Paris. I'm in LA. I don't know where you are, but you know, it's quarantine. I think we're allowed some creative freedom and to use our imaginations. Let's start the show. I love how artful JCV was in leading the market. I mean, the bathing suits, for instance. I have three of them. I love how the lines they, of those suits, the styles just look like something coming out of Paris in the 50s. Did someone say Paris? This calls for a glass of wine. Cheers. You know, they're so stylish and chic and perfect for every body type. Sally is doing a hell of an elevator pitch with Auntie Jack. I mean, even though being Lauren's assistant may technically be a step down, I have got my eye on the big picture. It's not where I am, it's where I'm going. Great. It's important to have a vision for the future, not just in life, but in fashion. You gotta hand it to Sally. She's a tricky one, but I gotta tell you something. She knows what she wants, and I'm not mad at it. Get yours, girl. Okay, so you want me to be in charge of JCB? Well, you answer to me, but yes. Oh my God. I am completely floored that Lauren is tapping Summer, of all people, to head up a fashion division. Summer's not really known for being very fashionable. Who better to take it into the next decade? <laughs> As a matter of fact, she dresses like a granny. I'm just saying, it's facts. Wait, you're, you're waging war against your family for their money? What else do they have that I'd want? Their love? You can't make them love you. Some fear you. This is a very unusual conversation in my opinion. I mean, I know that Mariah is like known for her meddling, but she despises Theo. She has nothing but contempt for him. So why are they having a little heart to heart at Crimson Lights? And why is Theo basically showing his hand and telling her exactly what he plans to do, knowing that she's Kyle's very good friend? Just doesn't make sense. I know what you are capable of. I never want to keep you from your full potential. Spoken like a true auntie, okay? And if that takes you somewhere else, well, it will be Jabot's deep and abiding loss, but it will be a great opportunity for you. Is there anyone more supportive than Auntie Jack? He's just so nurturing for everyone except his son Kimo, of course. We don't know where he is. This is Kismet. I was just about to reach out to you. Beat you to it. I have news. I've heard. You offered Summer a job running JCV, but here's what I can't figure out. Why did you choose her? Yes, Kyle, that's a very valid question. I don't report to you. I'm just curious. That's all. Well, I asked Summer to take the job at JCV because she is smart. So you don't read Runway? She's talented. And you have no style or sense of fashion. She has a vision for the future. You know. If you're going to work for a fashion imprint, it should be all about fashion and nothing else. Why did you do it? Because I didn't want to be the only one who didn't. You're stronger than that. You're better than this. Actually, no, Nick, newsflash, she's not stronger than that and she's not better than that. And that's actually your fault. If she would have just stayed at boarding school, she'd be just fine. These are the perils of growing up in Genoa City. We are a tangible entity with many terms and conditions that clearly spell out your duties that you are contractually obligated to perform. You are contractually obligated to be my bitch. <laughs> and I don't know how come you didn't see that in fine print, but it's all there in black and white. I own you, Phyllis. Hey. 
You knew my daughter. My underage daughter was drinking, and you didn't tell me about it. Okay, listen. I know you're upset. No, upset doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what I'm feeling right now. Were you ever planning to tell me? And also, Phyllis, let's not forget that the reason that Cassie died was because she was trying to drive your son home. So this really hits hard, sis. You know better than this. Faith has been going through hell. Her grandmother's an alcoholic. I cannot believe you are this irresponsible. You should know better. But if Nicholas wants to break up with you, I will totally get behind him on that because you're trash. I'm sorry for being human. I'm sorry for having faults. And I am sorry for not living up to the great Nick Newman. Oh my God. Leave it to Phyllis to somehow reverse psychology her way out of shit. She is so good. Gotta hand it to her. 